We're going live. We're live, Bubbles, and we have a log. A log. Bubbles, like, smelling the log. Betty was like, ooh, what's this thing you just brought in from the house? This is a log. But we're not going to talk about logs. We're going to talk about backlogs today and shaping up your backlog a little bit for your sprints, your combine, how you organize and talk about stuff and help you focus. So this is the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. I am Greg Master, Scrum Master and Agile Coach. And we talk about Scrum and Agile in a practical and technical way, right, Bubbles? Bubbles, the cat's over here. And uh, so you can get value to your customer. And part of the backlog is how do you establish your value and rank which ones you want to do first, when, where. And uh, not work crazy hours. And that's the whole idea of what we're going to talk about buckets today, too. Using buckets to take care of your backlog. And then uh, so we can get home to family and friends, have fun, enjoy the holidays. I got the log out because it is, you know, how it's getting colder here. And it made me think, oh, I'm going to get a log. I probably should use the bucket. Maybe when I hit this topic again, I'll bring a bucket. But today, since it's colder here on the East Coast, I figured I'd get a log from the fire pit. Right, Bubbles? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I hope you're doing well today. Today I want to talk about um, backlogs, and I have a whiteboard. We're going to do a little whiteboarding here and talk about managing backlogs, especially for product owners, uh, scrum masters. Scrum masters should be teaching their uh, product owners how to do this. If you're not, you're not, you know, personally, you're not doing your job. You have to help your team. You have to help coach your Product owners and efficiency and lean operations and agile thinking also. So you got to do that too. Um, so, so let's say we had a backlog. Backlog. All right. And it's got a bunch of stuff in it. Lots of stuff. I mean, they could be hundreds and stuff. Hundreds. You know, hundreds. Just hundreds of stuff piled up in backlog. Typical backlog. You go to some Jira backlogs. And you, and, or, or Azure backlogs or, or or any one of the products out there. Hi, Rally backlogs, any kind of system out there. We're just a list on the wall. My wall up there has got a big backlog right now. You got this giant backlog. This doesn't help you organize your thoughts. You're like, which one do I take first? There, most systems have a priority. Maybe this is one, two, three, so on and so forth. But there's so much stuff, you know, it's just, it's just cluttered. It's just cluttered with backlog stuff. Bad. This is a mess. I would call it mess. Messy. A master. How about that? So it's a messy backlog. What I like to recommend the teams is go ahead, and most teams do, but you'd be amazed how many teams don't. They, they, I have them set up buckets. So we'd use buckets. And then there's the first bucket, which is usually in Scrum, would be the current or active sprint, maybe. Okay. So I, I have them put a bucket in. And then I have them do maybe up to five buckets or five sprints. And then past that is a backlog. Anything past that is just a general backlog. Why do I do this? Because it takes this big giant list and breaks it up into maybe 10 items here, 10 items here, 10 items here, and so forth. So each bucket, I'm just going to put 10 items. It goes up to 40. I've seen, I've seen 40. To be honest with you, I think 40 is kind of high, but depending how long the sprint is, I've seen 40, right? Um, this would be hundreds. Like I said, over here, hundreds down there or thousands, who knows, tens of hundreds um, in the big backlog. And then you have back in the very bottom up to five buckets, you might have your, your backlog, which just carries the rest of the stuff. Reason why I stay at five, because some teams will try to do all your sprints for the whole year. I'm like, no, don't do that. When it makes a system too cluttered, too hard to use. But what you're really doing is asking your team, hey, team. Concentrate on this first bucket, right? And then, and then when that bucket's done, when it's done, and I'll cross it off like a little red X here, my whiteboard, cross that bucket off. Now we're now we're at the second sprint, right? Or second bucket, and then we concentrate on that. It helps the team focus, and I'll be honest with you, it helps the the product owners focus too, 
Because then you can put a goal. You can do a goal for that bucket. You know, you can say what my goal, what I my goal from a business perspective, what my team wants to do. Maybe you have a business goal. Maybe there's a tech goal. Maybe there's a process improvement goal. You know, a couple areas that would be part of this bucket, right? And you put that at top and it gives you an idea what stories in your backlog do you want to put in that bucket. And this helps the team think. And it also lets the team know there is a plan to what you're going to be doing in the future. What teams don't like is when they see a big garble mix. They're like, do we even know what we're doing? It's a mess. There's too much stuff I can't concentrate. By breaking it down into small buckets, it helps the teams focus on what they're going to work on. And for discussions, because when you talk about these buckets and you do um, story refinement, you know, it makes story refinement so much easier because now you're just looking at the items in the bucket, right? So you could do a little story refinement. And there's all kinds of um, different ways. And I'll talk about them as we go through the show in different episodes. But you can do story refinement for that bucket. You know, you just... Hey, what if we do it? We're just reviewing the stories in that bucket. That's all. We're going to refine those stories, make them ready so that they meet our definition of ready. They may go on, right? It helps focus everything. It helps. What are you working on? What does it look like? What's the next thing? And if your boss ever asks you, what are you doing next? Or what's your plan? You have a couple buckets worth of information from which you can, uh, I don't know what you want to say collect or group and have a discussion so you can talk see here's another thing let's say you had to do the 60 second elevator speech one minute elevator speech when we've done that show before too the elevator speech you can do an elevator speech on a bucket you can't do an elevator speech on this giant massive list of stuff but you can do an elevator speech so this you know that's an elevator speech pitch elevator pitch right you can do an elevator pitch on this bucket it's easy it's easy you can't do an elevator pitch pitch for here for this hundreds can't do it can't do it it's impossible it's not going to work but you can do it what am i doing for the next two weeks what am i doing for the, what is my team doing for next sprint you can give that elevator pitch to anyone so this is some of the things that I talk about. Get your teams making buckets, whether you want to call them sprints, Kanban. You can come up with some different um, variations of it. They have some pre-buckets too. Um, you can group stuff in different areas and Kanban boards and the backlogs there too. So, but, I, but the one thing I love about Scrum is the buckets. So I have people create buckets so they can focus on what they're doing and managing their time. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, just a little grooming. I know the new year's coming up. A lot of teams are talking about what do they want to do in the new year. And one last recommendation on that is here, Bubbles. You want to say hi? Come here, Bubbles. She's up. Oh, there's the Bubbles. <laughs> She's trying to figure out what she did. She's going to knit the dog. Just <laughs> the dog, dog off. Anyway. When you do it, don't try to say, what am I doing for the next year? You don't know how many times I've, I've coached or they don't plan a whole year out because you have no idea. But nice thing with the small buckets and don't fill them up all the way, by the way. I didn't say that either. When you do these buckets, don't fill them up to maximum capacity. Just go up to 60 to 80 percent capacity, what you think you're going to do. And the reason being is that if stuff doesn't get done in the previous buckets, you can roll those couple stories into the next bucket without having to go shifting everything around and do a lot of shuffling around and everything like that. Just wait to the last minute on your sprint planning day or before your sprint planning day, as we talked about that, to move stuff over before you fill the bucket all the way up to the top. So just something to share with you all as far as backlog management, making it not so much a mess. And then get rid of the clutter and get rid of all the booted backlog by breaking down the smaller bites. Boy, isn't that agile? That's something we talk about. Break it down the smaller pieces. Break down that giant backlog into smaller buckets. So 
with that, I say, have a great day. Happy scrumming. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. And I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye.